Hello my creative techies, I'm Tiffany and on my channel I typically talk about my life living here in the Bay Area as a designer. So today I thought I'd talk to you about some of the most important things I did that helped me land my job as a UX designer, building an online portfolio. Now if you don't know what an online portfolio is, it's basically a website that a lot of designers use to showcase their work to future employers and future clients. Online portfolios are great because you can share your favorite projects that you've worked on, you can talk about your background, you can talk about your entire UX process on how you started a project from start to finish, and you can also attach your resume or link your contact information so that people want to reach out to you if they feel like collaborating with you or if they want to work with you. And the best thing about it is you don't even need to learn how to code to build it. You can actually use a lot of different tools online to conveniently build your portfolio and customize it the way that you want. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you a cool tool that I used called Wix that helped me build my online portfolio. Wix, thank you so much for sponsoring this video and allowing me to share it with all of my subscribers. I really hope that all my internet friends find value from this and if you're interested, I'm also going to be putting a link below so that you can use it to build your online portfolio. So enough of this chit chatting, let's get started. Let's talk about Wix's onboarding process. When you first start a website, the process is very straightforward. The website asks you what type of site you're interested in making, what type of experience you have building websites, and then they offer a variety of different templates to choose from. There are many templates to choose from and Wix allows you to customize it to your liking. And the template that I actually ended up using was something called Art Director. I really like the layout for me to kind of get started as a base to build my portfolio. So you kind of just click on edit on that button and it'll open up this website for you with all the fields kind of filled already. And then from there you have the ability to basically customize it yourself. So we're going to go into the features next. I really like the different features that Wix offers when you're building your website. There's a left navigation on the side that allows you to create different pages for your website, select specific theme colors, and it also has a media section that allows you to choose which photos you want to include and additional apps and tools you can use with your website to optimize it. So typically when I start my portfolio, I always have four default pages that I always go to and I always create a home page, a work page, an about me page, and a contact me page. And I think that these are all basic fundamental pages to have on your portfolio. I usually like to use four projects and I like to put those on because I feel like that's a good enough variety. If you don't know how to create them or if you don't have actual real experience, you can also create projects yourself. That's what I did when I started off as a designer. Um, I redesigned a lot of apps on my own and or I asked people for if they wanted my help and so I included those projects in my portfolio. But starting off with the home page, when you first choose a template to work with, you get taken to this page where everything is pretty much pre-filled for you already. So you've got the intro, you've got the gallery section below, and you have a couple of social Instagram and Behance or LinkedIn social media links that you can customize to your own. So this is a great place for you to start as a base. First, to edit some of the text, I'm going to click on some of the buttons and you can click on change text and I will put instead of this I'll put my name so Tiffany Bowie. Here it's really nice that it's super intuitive so what you can do is you can double click on it and change the text to however you'd like. So I typically like to put in a short intro sentence about me, um, where I'm from, what kind of designer I am so I'm going to write Hi, my name is Tiffany. Hi, my name is Tiffany, and I am a senior UX designer from the San Francisco Bay Area. You can also choose to change the text. So you see these text settings that pop up on the side. You can change it to whatever you like. So there is a variety of different fonts that you can choose from. And I'm going to select Open Sans just because I think it's a nice minimalist look. So make sure you highlight the entire thing. Scroll down click open sans. You can play with the boldness, the font weight, and you can also change the different colors by clicking on the A um, style button right here. 
and they have different theme colors that you can choose from. Or you could click on custom colors where you choose your own color and add it. But I think for this scenario, I'm just gonna use a simple black text. I also think it'd be nice to be able to remove this and instead add a button. So you can click on delete. And when you go here on the side, there are different things that you can choose from. You can choose to add a strip, like a section, text, images, a button, gallery, and even social icons if you want. But for right now, I'll choose button. And I think I really like this purple button right here. So I can drag it and I'll write view work. So this is how you would change the text within the button. You just click on the button and there is an area that lets you change the text. And I also think that the background can use a little bit more color or just be a little bit more interesting than just a solid background. So you can do this by clicking on a change strip background. And then this pops up right here and you can choose an image. So what I like about Wix is I really like that there's this model that pops up that gives you a variety of different, very high quality images that you can use. So I like that they offer that for you. Um, there's also a shutter stock plugin that you can choose from or Unsplash, which is something that I've chosen a lot in the past. I've used Unsplash a lot for a lot of my images. And so I'm looking for a flat lay image. So I can look and filter by different things like fashion, travel, or I can just type in the search flat lay. And so a lot of different types of flat lay images appear. So I like this one over here. This one is a nice one. I think it's pretty minimal and it's clean. So I click change background. And voila, there it is. This is how you add a background image to your first section header. So I think this looks really nice and looks really minimal so far. Um, a couple of things I already noticed is that you can see that the colors up here, it's kind of hidden. So I want to change the color right here as well. Let's click design and I can customize the design. I can change the opacity. So I could put zero opacity and that's basically how it makes it just look like a normal uh, see-through button. Um, but right here, it looks like it's really hard to see what types of menus I have. So I can manage the menu myself. I click on manage menu. So right here, it's nice because it shows that you have different projects available, but you can hide it from the menu and the navigation with this eye icon. And I wanna move the order. So you can click and drag it to the top and you'll see that it actually changes the order. This is the home page, and I can actually change and click on the layout of it. So here I can change how I want the text to be aligned. I want it to be aligned right to left or left to right. And I wanna change the design of it. So I can click on this and I can show how I want it to look. So I kind of like this style of design up here for my menu. What I can also do is I can maybe customize it. So maybe I want the colors to look a little bit different. I think it would be nice to have it be black so it matches with everything else. So I can change the background of it. You can also change the alignment. So I think I'm going to change it to center aligned. All right, so we've got the first uh, top section narrowed down. And now the bottom section is basically the gallery section. This is typically where I like to put pictures and previews of my portfolio and the projects that I want to show. So I'll click manage media and what I'll do is I'm going to select all of these and just delete them because I want to add my own images on here. So you can click add media, add image, and I can upload my own media right here by clicking on the upload media button and upload from computer. And now I've added some of the projects that I know that I want to have on here and click add to page. And it gives you the option now to also reposition any of these images. So I want this one to go first so I can just drag and drop it to show this is basically the order that I want it. All right, then I'll click done. And now you can see the images right here. So I really like that 
That was very intuitive. I can also click on settings if I want to, and I can change the layout. So you can change it to a grid, collage. Um, so you can kind of play around with the layouts, but I typically like to use the grid layout. So under settings, you can click on a link opens and then you can choose the action. So we can add links to the gallery. So we click manage media. At the right panel, you can see that there's the title that you can name it. So I just named it UX Portfolio Project One. And then you can add a link right here for that specific image. And you can choose where you want it to link to. So you can choose a different web address, a specific page on here, um, a phone number. So I'm going to click on page and it'll ask you which page you want it to link to. So I think I'd like to link it to Project One over here. And you can also choose how it opens in a new tab, a new window, or in the current window that you already are in. So I'll click done, done. And now if visitors click on this, then it should take them to that project one page. Now if we scroll a little bit further down, so with these social media buttons, you can also click on the link that you want it to attach to. So here, I have the web address and I actually can, I can put in my own Instagram handle. So you can um, remove this if you want to. And it's nice that you can just click on it and delete it right here on the screen itself. So this is basically how I built my home page. Now let's move on to building the project page. To create a project page, you can go to this left navigation right here. And you can go to the menus and pages button. You can click on add page. And I kind of like to start off with a blank page, a blank canvas. So what I'll do is I'll click blank page, UX project one. So I usually like to add an image, so I will click on add click image. I can click on my image uploads and I'll choose the image that I had previously on my home page. So I'll click this, add to page. And so it automatically adds it on here and I can just drag it to however big I want it. And then I can click on this plus button and add a new strip. So I can click on this strip and add something new. I like that it's already gray, but now I wanna add some text. So I think I'd like to add the title of my project. So I'll click on add text and you can choose the different types of headings and types of style text that you'd like. So for this one, scrolling down, you can just kind of look and review what you want. I think what I will end up doing is I will click on big title. So big title will appear on the screen and I just, double click and I'm able to edit the text. So I will call it Metrolink Redesign. And you can drag it and then edit text to align it. So I can scroll down and I can change the alignment to center alignment just to make sure everything's centered and I can drag it up here. And then I can write a little description about what this redesign process was about. So it's always good to have a little overview. So I'll click on add, I'll click on text. I'll choose paragraphs because it's more like a body text and it'll add this style on. And then I'll just write in exactly what the overview is for this. And I can drag it as well. I think this text is still a little bit small so I can edit the text and change the, the type of paragraph it is. I think I can change the font size, so I wanna change it to 20. I think this is a good enough size, and I'll change this font to Open Sans. I could also play with the character spacing, so this makes it how far apart you want the letters to be, so I'll put it to 0 0.05. And then I can also save this theme, so um, when I save this, Every single time I click on paragraph two next time, it'll have the changes for the font style that I chose, which I really, really like, and I think is super cool. Now I also want to be able to add my roles. So I can go back and I can either click on this text, copy and paste it, which makes it really fast. And I can also drag this 
section so it makes it longer if I want to add more padding. So it makes it very nice that it has this flexibility. For the next part, I want to write a new section. So I'll click on add. I'll click on this next section. And I think for this one, I want to change the color to white. So um, you can change the image, you can make it into a video, or you can just change the color. So I can change it to white right here. So now that you can see that there's a little bit of a separation, I think that would be, that's always nice to create some kind of separation. And this time I'll choose all caps to kind of add section headers and I'll put problem statement. But I wanna choose a different font, so I'll choose open sans. So this is my new problem statement. And I will add in text again. And then I'll put what the problem statement is and it put that right here. I can also add the user pain points underneath it. And I can have the ability to put bullet points. So if I wanted to add bullet points, I could do this. And I can adjust the page height so I can add a little bit more and talk about the user personas. For the rest of this project, I repeated the steps I showed and used the same features. I added a new strip for each section, used the add image feature to upload my own designs, and added more text to write descriptions. It took me some time, but before you know it, you're finally done. All these features can be used to create the other pages in your portfolio. So that was my tutorial on how to use Wix to build your online portfolio. If you want to get started and use it yourself, then I'm going to link a link below that's convenient for you to log on and try it yourself. Highly recommend it. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, thank you so, so, so much again for watching. Good luck on your UX career, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Mwah.